Hey everybody, this is the Sliders Review. And since it's Women's History Month, I'm here today to talk to you about the new Worst Witch Season 1 The Rundown Review. So I finally finished and finally watched for the first time The New Worst Witch, at least the first season. I'm about to do the second season at some point. And I have to say, this is a pretty nice show. Like, it's nice, it's pleasant, it's cute. Anybody can watch this show, especially that of little kids. And... I have, I have to say, it's probably one of my second to least favorite worst witch type things. Um, Weird College is the worst one of them all. This show is good, but there's a problem with this show. It's too kid friendly and stuff. There's no real dire like obstacle. There's no real threat that's like as immense or like or scary as that of the 2017 series um because see like the 2017 series the first one i watched and the thing about that is that you know because it's the worst witch um you know oh things go haywire and they have to like say today like in the classroom and stuff like that that's exactly how this series is and that's all this series is. But the thing about the 2017 series is that they also have bigger stakes. Like when uh, um, Hubble had to like, Millie had to like um, turn that one teacher dude, or it was a frog and turn it back into like a teacher, a human person. Um, um, Agatha had to stop her. And then in the other season, they started coming up with bigger consequences because, you know, since Harry Potter basically just ripped off the worst witch, they had to kind of compete with that, but on the kids' level, and they did some pretty good stuff. Like with Millie's mom, like um, learning magic and stuff, the, the crazy thing that happened with that, that was, I was like, oh my God, dude, like what's gonna happen? And then with that whole, um, God, what was that girl who had turned the stone because um, Miss Heartburn, like she gave magic to like a regular human and things didn't go the way she wanted to and the girl had to be turned into stone then she came back and it was kind of like is she really evil is she not you know stuff like that um and all this other dire stuff like every season had this big dire thing and this show really didn't you know and so like the only time they had something really dire was towards the end And so it's like 13 episodes and stuff. And so it's kind of like, you know, they just repeated stuff from every other season with the last episode with Agatha coming back and everything. So they couldn't even find like a new villain. They just recycled the old one. Now there is a really good episode that deals with time. It's probably the best episode of that season. I love it. And one day I will talk about it. And so, but for the most part, this is a nice, pleasant show. It just doesn't have that 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 bite factor as a 2017, and it doesn't have that pleasant organic feeling as the original series. You can clearly tell that this is you know like a, a carbon copy of the original series, but they do make it their own. Like there's some interesting characters, but they're recycled characters that are supposed to be like the other characters. So that's kind of a bummer, but still is very nice. I do like some of these new characters. They're really neat. Um, what's her name? Um, Cressy? Um, her name is Crescent Moon, I think her name is. She's probably my favorite one, which is kind of weird because she's not even the main, main superstar of the show. Um, Hetty Hubble is and stuff. And Hetty's cool and everything, but I just like Cressy's a whole lot more. I like how sassy, um, sassy she is and stuff. Like, one of the funniest things was when they joined this club they wasn't supposed to join, and they end up getting shrunk, her and Mona. And Cressy's just kind of like, uh, pouting with her hands folded, talking about, I want my cat. <laughs> and then Mona had to remind her that, look, you shrunk to where you're two inches. Your voice now sounds squeaky. A cat is not your best friend right now. <laughs> that was just like too hilarious. And so like, but for the most part, this show deals with, of course, um, Henrietta Hubble, they call her Hetty. She is the cousin of Mildred Hubble. Now, I truly feel like she should have been 
the daughter of like Mildred or probably the sister. Because much time has now passed from the original series. Um, Millie is not, you know, now graduated from college and her hair grew back out and all this other stuff. I did not like her short hair in weird college. I did not like weird college at all. And so, um, you know, she's much older now and wiser and stuff. And so I think it would have been better if she was probably like the daughter of her instead of the cousin. But hey, you know, whatever. And she only appears in the first episode. And then, so the thing about Hetty Hubble is that, like, they gave her pigtails like Millie. And that was just kind of weird. It's like, why would your cousin have pigtails too? That's like a Millie thing. I wish they would, and also a mod thing. I wish they would have went with something a little bit different. Like, you know what I'm saying? Gave her her own hairstyle, which they did in the second season I saw. So that's a good thing, but they should have did it in the first. Give her her own identity. You know what I'm saying? Now, her personality is similar to that of the original uh, Mildred. Um, but slightly different. She's nice and everything, and she is the worst witch, always messing up. But this version is slightly selfish, just a little bit. Um, she's not evil or bad, it's just that she's always getting in trouble and stuff. Um, uh, more so than just, like, you know, mixing up a potion and stuff. And, because there was this one episode where Mona... Hallow got like a letter from her dad. She was kind of like upset about that. They didn't want to know nobody what's in it. I think it told what she was getting for like her birthday. Was, no, it was something. And so Hetty, not Hetty, yeah, Hetty wanted to know what she wanted for her birthday, but didn't know. So she read her diary and that pissed Mona off. And Mona just did not talk to her no more after that and didn't want nothing to do with her. So she found out that Cressy had, um, is a time witch and has the ability to turn back time. So she uses that ability to correct that wrong she did, right? And she did until she got greedy and selfish and all like, you know what? I'm still going to read your diary and does it anyway and told Cressy that, you know, oh, you know, if we mess up again, you can just turn back time. Only problem is... It takes a lot out of Cressy to the point where she becomes delirious and ill and they're not supposed to just go through time whenever they feel like it. You have to get like, it had to be like a dire circumstances and other time witches have to like help in and stuff like that. So everything goes haywire. The, um, or like the, the, the whole essence around like the, um, atmosphere was distorted and grayish. Um, people was like moving through time. Miss Hardbroom turned into that of a child. Um, Mrs. Nightingale, she, she, um, somehow trans, um, she went through time to where it was Christmas and thinking it's Christmas and everything was just going crazy. There was like, it was like, it was probably like a storm outside and everything. So, um, Hetty really screwed up because she was being selfish and everything. And thank God, Miss Crackle and like Cressy was able to like turn back time and fix everything. But it's like, it's those little things that she does that like messes things up that makes her like the worst witch. Because for the most part, she is okay with magic, unlike, um, and spells, unlike, um, Millie, but she still messes up when she, like, you know, um, mixes, like, potions and stuff like that up. Now, one thing that is kind of irritating is, like, when there is conflict in the show, like, circumstances, like, say somebody messes up and then, um, Hetty has to, like, save the day. The result, the resolve of it is not that satisfying. Cause like, okay, there's this one girl named Cynthia. Um, she comes to school and she's like a mean girl, kind of like Belladonna Bindweed. I love saying that name. <laughs> That's one thing about this show. They got some great names. And so, um, she doesn't like Mona Hallow and everything because this is the first Hallow that is actually nice. And so she's like rude mean, right? So I'm thinking, wow, she's going to give Belladonna uh, a run for her money in the rude department, but they join forces and stuff. And so like she stole something from Miss Crackle and they blamed Hetty for it. So... 
Um, they try to figure out, you know, who stole it. Or Hetty's trying to figure out who stole it and everything. She didn't clear her name. And somebody left behind a feather. See, Cynthia has an owl because she came from a different school. Um, pentangles and everything. And so they're allowed to have like owls over there and stuff. And so her owl constantly follows her, gets on her nerves. So it left a feather behind. So Hetty saw this and said, you know, um, whoever stole it has like an owl and everything. So they think it's Mrs. Swoop because Mrs. Swoop also came from Pentangles a long time ago, back when Mil Millie was like a kid and stuff. But she tells her, you know, um, Cynthia has an owl too. So instead of the teachers being all, um, asking like, you know, Cynthia, oh, did you do this or, or use a spell to see if she's lying? She confesses by mistake because she ratted herself out because she's all like, you stupid bird. I told you to leave me alone and now you got me caught. And that's how they solved the day. She ratted herself out by mistake. And so it doesn't have no real good resolve to it, you know? Also in like the 13th episode, the last one, um, Agatha comes back into play and tries to take over the school because, you know, that's what she does. And so she sends, like, Hetty and her friends to, like, a dungeon and then they get out through the help of, like, I think, like, uh, this one teacher who's, like, a librarian. And they had to get Miss Hardbroom to get them out because she was a rat. So she went to go get the teacher dude. And that's how they got out. She couldn't get out on her own. And so then one of the girl. Um, Illis or something like that. She, Illis Mustard Seed. <laughs> mustard Seed. <laughs> and so she had this um, potion that turns inanimate objects into real. So she was able to turn the statues of Miss Cackle and the other teachers back to like living. And, but yeah, it wasn't our main star doing that. Like, you know, so that kind of sucks in a way because it's kind of like okay why is this girl like a hero she needs to be the hero of the show and it doesn't always show her like that also there was one episode where there was like a wizards that came and so one of the wizards she thought was kind of like a con man so she was gonna prove him wrong so she read this spell and when she did her magic thing it was supposed to reveal his true secrets and identities and whatever he's lying about but instead it just ripped his clothes off turns out he was innocent the entire time and then it ends like that so it was just kind of like what was the point of that entire episode like you know what i'm saying but for the most part like i said you know it's a nice series like it's fun to watch that's how the original one and also the 2017 one is it's fun to watch but they had a bit more higher stakes every now and then um mona hello she like i said well she's nice so that's kind of like weird it's a hello that's nice and so there's a really good episode with her called the bewitching of mona hello is where Cressy supposed to do this spell where she sings and she has a lovely singing voice and i think belladonna and cynthia messes it up and so it turns um mona evil and whoo boy she is evil <laughs> Let me tell you when she's on in that spells. That was a good episode. And then let's see, there was one. Oh, see, there's nothing where there's no resolve. So like something happened and there's this one girl, um, Ella, um Phyllis um or Dillis or whatever her name is Mustard Seed. And she wants to be popular. She finds that Hetty found the book that's like magic spells that are like very powerful. You ain't supposed to use them. So she used it to make herself popular. And everybody who sees it just wants to be her friend and hang out with her there at the end teachers, right? And so like then they discover somebody stole the book. They knew Hetty had it, so they assume it's her. She's about to be a spell. So then they had to find out who stole it. They think Belladonna did it. So they come up with a truth um, potion. And so they found out Belladonna didn't do it. But then everybody took the truth potion by mistake. They put it in the food. Now everybody is telling the truth. So Hetty is kind of like, okay, well, we need a reverse of that spell. So then she mistakenly made a lying potion. So then she realized, oh, wait a minute. If everybody has this potion, no, no, no. They were going to figure out, I think, like how, who stole the book. But somebody said, oh, you know, if somebody takes this potion and they tell the truth, 
and know they're supposed to be lying, then they know who took it. Well, instead of giving it to the girl, she just confesses and everything. So it's kind of like, you know, it would have been nice. It, it was nice that she confessed. That's a good moral lesson. But you, you want some magic thrown in there for her to be caught in everything, you know? And so that's kind of like how episodes are. Also kind of like the boomerang one where it's like she's flying on her broom and then something happens. A teacher creates like a tornado by mistake and it catches her. So she's hovering in the air. Her broomstick is just a flying. So she screams out boomerang and they could come back like a boomerang, you know? And so she gets back on her broom and everything's okay. Well, Miss Crackle thinks that she is like a gifted like broom rider and she did the impossible boomerang trick. So they're showering her with gifts. And so she, instead of confessing, she decides to be selfish and let everybody like praise her and everything, right? Until it's time because they want her to compete for like these big competition type thing. Well, it's time for her to do it for real. And they, she couldn't do it. So of course they reenacted that tornado spell and she did her little boomerang thing again. And so it's kind of like she didn't really do it, you know, but she later on confessed and stuff like that. And so that's kind of like how the series is. So it's nice kid level with you know kids getting in trouble but there's no real oh i'm trying to take over the world to like the, the last episode you know what i'm saying it would be nice that they would throw that through that in the middle a little bit in the beginning and instead of just having two episodes like that towards the end um the lady who played miss crackle in the first series she comes back she's a lot meaner this season and stuff she raises her voice she's supposed to be like light-hearted and stuff um but she's like mean miss hardbroom is played by a different teacher i like this miss hardbroom she's probably my favorite one <laughs> she has some great one-liners now my original review of this series i said that there was a teacher from the original series that left at some point and came back for this i made a mistake i was thinking of miss nightingale she was in the first season of the new verse witch but then she left during the second for some bizarre reason and so like um when she left they recast um they just they, they didn't recast the character they just brought in a brand new person they brought in like a, a, a white actress i will say about this this is the only worst witch where they have like a huge diverse cast there's lots of people of color that's why i was kind of offended when they re um recast a new character that was like white because with the other worst witch series the original one they did something that was cool see the worst witch in the books are pretty much predominantly white so they added some people of color into the first series so they created two new characters and let them be recurring characters who was friends with the um, main trio and then in the 2017 series they race bent two of the characters uh, and so you know so that was nice there but then in this one there's lots of people of color and stuff that have like recurring roles and it's really cool to see and so another teacher i'm thinking of miss swoop now miss swoop is a very interesting character she is a bit shy slightly clumsy she loves for her kids to have fun doing pe stuff but this is what's really cool about the actress. Um, she started off in one episode of the original series towards the end. She is from Miss Pentangles. Uh, so she was just like a guest like student over there. Then she got cast in recurring role in Weird Sister College. And then when this series came out in 2005, they cast her to play like a teacher and stuff. So that's like really neat. And so this series only lasted for two seasons. It would have had a third, but the main actress and certain and, and um, some of the other cast decided they didn't want to renew their contract for some bizarre reason. Not sure why, because most of them aren't really doing nothing now. So <laughs> some of them are probably regretting it now. But I don't know why they didn't want to renew their contract. Uh, it, it didn't really take that much out of them because there wasn't that much special effects or nothing like that. However, a lot of the special effects are really crappy. <laughs> Power Rangers do a better job than them, <laughs> even in the 90s. 
Whenever they would, like use their power to shoot like energy discharges and electricity, it always looked cartoony. The flying was okay, but nothing near as good as the 2017 series. And so there really isn't like in this show, there really isn't that much magic, like special effects that are going on, other than somebody like teleporting. They do the teleportation thing really good. But it's kind of weird, a show about witches, and yeah, they do like magical stuff, but not really. Like you don't really see that much magical stuff happening. It's more of a psychological thing, like lying or being popular or just telling the truth. So that kind of like dragged it down a little bit. But all in all, like I said, it's a good series and it is on YouTube. The intro, I gotta say, it has a bit of a weak intro. I love the original series when they sung that song. That was just like so lovely. I really like the clips that they showed in the 2017 one. But this one is just like Hetty just putting potions in and having things blow up in her face. <laughs> Happy Women's History Month, everybody. All right, I'll talk to you later. Bye.